as I will show you today, and I've showed you in the past, and I'll show you in the future, there's never any substitute for hard work. If you want big arms, these exercises I don't want to do, you work your ass off, and you will achieve it. Johnny o. Jackson here and I'm here at the seated cable row and I turn it into a bicep exercise I like to do it here on the seated row because it takes me off my feet it makes me a little unstable but I have to use my arms my bicep to actually do the exercise I can't grasp any momentum and swing or use my legs to help with the exercise I got to strictly use my arms so that's why I like this exercise so much you grab, I like to grab the wide grip on this exercise because it's a lot more comfortable than a close grip. Lie back, and then you just curl. I just demonstrated the camber curl. It's one of the most basic curls there is. You know, this is the exercise, you know, that each, pretty much each and every one of us bodybuilder started out doing. And so I can't say enough about sticking with the meat and potatoes, sticking with the basic exercises to graduate up to the more fancy, exercises that people like to do these days but with me i'm old school and i always say stick to the basics and you know you're going to get there this is my favorite variation of the preacher curl you know instead of coming into the machine and doing both arms at the same time you still can use one arm a little bit more than the other. You know, you can concentrate depending on which one is stronger, left or right. So, I like to come in and do the individual arm by itself, so I know this one arm and this one bicep is getting all the work. Very important on making sure the, the body is balanced and the muscle is balanced, strength and size. I usually do about four sets, um, 10 to 12 reps, graduating up in weight. And doing this exercise this way, the ideal of putting a little more pressure on that muscle, on that the muscle that you're working that day. Like I said, there's always gotta be one exercise, one set where you put some pressure on it. This makes sure that every every set that you do, you're putting it the max pressure on that bicep. alternating dumbbell curls as you can see I go fairly heavy I start out light and fairly strict on uh, the beginning but as I get towards the end or at the end I use the heaviest the heaviest weight I can use that day and do as many reps up to 15 that I can do like I said there always got to be one set then you put some pressure on it. And doing alternate dumbbell curls and that much weight in one arm, you can't help but to stimulate the muscle and break that muscle down. And this is my variation of 
the skull crusher or tricep extension. I love doing it with uh, dumbbells just so you can use your individual arm. You can adjust, let your body adjust to its comfort level and you're able to do more weight, more reps, more effectively when using dumbbells just cause you let your body adjust and you make sure that your tricep on that arm is getting most of the pressure. When you're doing them both together, you can use one arm a little bit more than the other to get the weight. This way you can isolate that tricep and get the max work out of it. And I love doing skull crushers because we know that the long head is the biggest muscle in your tricep. There's three heads and you wanna hit this inner or long head to get the max growth out of your triceps to get that look. The dip for tricep or tricep dips. Why I call it tricep dips is because when you do any exercise, if you lean slightly forward and do the exercise, you're putting a little bit more emphasis on your chest. When you're doing the exercise and you stay straight up and down, or even lean back a little bit, you isolate and hit the triceps more. So, of course, I like to lean back or straight up and down to hit the triceps, try to isolate them a little bit more. I like to do four exercises, 12 to 15 reps, trying to keep it concentrated and strict. One thing I like about this exercise is the dip, that it puts pressure and emphasis on all three heads of your tricep. So when it's working together, working more efficiently, you get a better mind and muscle connection. So you really concentrate and really squeeze up at the top, you know, to add about 10% more and about 10% more blood push into the muscle. And when I'm finishing up my triceps, I mostly like to do a superset. So this is one of my favorite supersets, is using the tricep pushdown machine, sitting, the tricep sitting pushdown machine, and dumbbell kickbacks. Really good combination. When it comes to the tricep pushdowns, it hit mostly uh, the outer head of your tricep, and then you turn around and do uh, the kickbacks, which also hits the outer head, but also put some emphasis on the long head of the tricep. And we know the long head is the biggest muscle in the tricep. So it's very important to hit that and stimulate that, you know, each time you do triceps and throughout the tricep workout. And I like to do when I'm doing a superset, three sets, uh, 10 to 15 reps each exercise. The tricep push down, the sitting tricep push down, it's somewhat similar as the dip. But with the dip, you're using mostly your body weight unless you put some weight on and add on, but also you're balancing yourself as well. So you use a lot of, it's a lot of stabilizing muscles to help stabilize you and it makes you put in a little bit more effort when doing the dips. Whereas the tricep push down is a really good concentrated exercise, don't get me wrong, but it's the weight is balanced for you you can concentrate on the tricep and the squeezing a little bit better than you can on the dip when you're concentrating on balancing yourself and all the stabilizing muscles that, you know, is included in the exercise. Uh, so, like I said, in turn, doing the sitting tricep push downs, you can concentrate a little bit with the mind muscle connection, squeeze a little bit better, uh, get a little bit more blood pumped into that muscle and then you turn around and superset it with the, I'm looking forward to competing next year in 2017 at the Toronto Pro, it will be my first show uh, sometime in uh, late May. Um, so I'll be calling up Chris Aceto. Uh, matter of fact, this weekend coming up, um, I think it's gonna be November 6th, uh, that Sunday. I'll be contacting him and uh, we'll start prep uh, starting Monday on getting ready for Toronto next year. So um, I'm looking to compete, you know, uh, in uh, at least about six shows next year. Um, so really active, uh, in it again, and um, feeling good, looking forward to it. So uh, make sure you don't miss it. <laughs>